what's up everybody welcome back to mount mograph uh before i even show you guys the video for today i'm just gonna throw it out there a quick disclaimer this is not my like video for the week this is just something cool i came up with today so i thought i'd share it was moderately fun to make i don't think it is actually going to be useful for anyone um unless you have like a hippie trippy friend or I, I don't know. It's not really useful. So I'm going to throw it out there right now. Um, it's moderately fun to make, and it's something cool to play around with. It might kill 10 minutes of your day. So, yeah, that's all I'm going to say. So dislike the video if you totally hate that, uh, but you don't have to watch it. Like, this is not the real video. I'm going to have a uh, low-poly uh, animation coming out Sunday that you guys can uh, follow along with if you want. And that one is, like, going to be real and... It'll it'll be a lot cooler. This is just like I came up with this by accident, um, just like geometric patterns today. Uh, looks like I spent a ton of time making this, but I found a really cool way to make it uh, fly by. I think I made this whole thing. Play it one more time in about maybe like five or six minutes. Not even kidding. Like this was super easy to make. Um, so yeah, you might learn something. Uh, maybe you can make a cool design. Uh, like I said, if you're making a music video or, <laughs> I don't know, if you're like trying to do something for a dubstep song, other than that, this is totally useless. So I'm going to throw that out there right now so you don't have to watch this video. I have a real one coming out, so don't uns <laughs> unsubscribe. I'm, I'm telling you guys right now, this is a little bit of a dumb video, uh, but it's kind of cool. So let's go into After Effects, and we're going to do Command N on our keyboard to create a new composition. Uh, let's make this 1920 uh, by 1080 for 35 seconds. is way too long. Uh, let's just do 10 seconds. Okay, so great. We have it set up 16 by 9, and I'm just going to name this composition. I'm going to call this like Root animation I don't know you can name this whatever you want like I said I'm gonna go over this real quick just so you guys can see um, that there are some cool things you can do uh, so now I'm actually going to do command N one more time and this time I am going to uh, create another composition and I'm gonna make this uh, let's see what would we want to make this what is divided by two uh, that is probably incorrect so command K on your keyboard if you want to ever change uh, composition settings if you didn't know that so I'm gonna make this 960 by 960 I pressed enter because I thought it was already in a locked ratio but it wasn't so you're gonna want 960 by 960 that's gonna create a perfect square uh, so just close that composition I'm gonna move my render queue over go into your root animation and drag your comp one but I'm gonna call this one fourth and you'll see why in just a second so I'm gonna drag this one fourth composition into my root animation looks like nothing has happened and that's right nothing has happened yet uh, now I'm actually going to use something I use a ton which is gonna be the move anchor point ever since I found it I'm hooked on it I use this for pretty much every project at this point just because it makes my workflow way easier and I'm also going to grab the line window so you don't have to do that uh, I always do that now just because it, it's just man it makes your projects go easier so cool now that we have that uh, I'm actually going to do command Y on my keyboard to create a background just so I can uh, distinguish between that and the composition call this BG real quick like I said this will not be a long video uh, so okay uh, that really didn't help our situation but it's alright so on your move anchor point window just uh, after you have your one-fourth comp selected just put your anchor point in this uh, corner over here so as you can see it jumps down over here Next, uh, center it in your window, your composition, and press P on your keyboard to bring up your uh, position properties. And uh, I believe if we set this to, uh, let's see, 540 by 960, that is not in the video middle. Um, let me just find out which one is actually in the middle, uh, what that's going to have to be. Is it, sorry, uh, oh, okay. So it's gonna be 960 by 540. I think I had that backwards. And that'll put it, in uh, this like one fourth of your screen and I know it goes out a little bit because it's a perfect square you'll see why in a second so that was really easy to do don't worry about anything else right now once you have this set up real quick and this is literally going to be the key to making this entire animation in just minutes so now click into your one fourth uh, your one fourth uh, composition it's gonna bring up your square video 
And what we're going to do is just create a squared by, you can double click this and it'll size exactly to your composition. I just did that because it's easy, puts my anchor point in the middle. Could have used the tool, but I didn't this time because I'm feeling crazy. And this is just a random video once again. So this is kind of cool, uh, but you probably won't find it too useful. So I just uh, put my anchor point in the middle of this area right here. Um, not area of the square press B on your keyboard and we're gonna set this to zero by uh, let's see what would this be uh, 540 no it would be uh, so Y is always at the bottom zero Y is up here so what would this this was 960 uh, so there we go zero by 960 is our position and let me change the color on this real quick I'm just gonna do a blue color scheme because you know make it look fresh and whatnot uh, okay, so I just selected a blue. Uh, we have our little square in the corner. I'm going to just call this square one, just to start creating our hierarchy. Uh, press R on your keyboard to bring up your rotation. I'm going to turn this back. Uh, since we set our anchor point, it's going to rotate perfectly. Uh, set this to negative 90, should do. So you won't see it on the screen. On your keyboard, press Shift and page down to go forward on your timeline 10 frames and just set a rotation keyframe there so shift uh, page down one more time 10 more frames forward and I am going to rotate this uh, to what would this be uh, sorry minus 45 degrees so there we go right now that doesn't look too exciting uh, but basically this is going to make a kaleidoscope effect um, which it turns out pretty cool. So I just duplicated the composite, the square one, pressing Command D on my keyboard with the layer selected. Press U on your keyboard to bring up your properties. And right here we have our, go back to zero, so it's gonna be set here. Uh, we're gonna want to actually put it to uh, 90 degrees. And we are going to, then it should rotate to uh, 45 degrees on this layer instead of negative 45 degrees. So yeah, this is going to be a short video. Hang in there. Uh, it's kind of cool what we end up getting. Uh, and it's really easy. So hopefully you can come up with something cool, impress your friends, and everything like that. So if I'm going to scrub back in my timeline with my time indicator, press space on your keyboard, and there we go. Looks not very fancy. We just have this... Uh, this little like I don't know square Pac-Man happen but we're gonna just add a couple quick layers and just give you a general idea of how to create that uh, crazy geometric pattern that I did in this one super super easy so here we go minimize the window we have these two squares selected press command D on your keyboard one time press S on your keyboard and let's just scale this up uh, maybe to like 37 it doesn't matter that much uh, and the colors are the same right now so you can't really see the difference all I'm gonna have to do is select one of my layers select my fill grab my eyedropper tool and I'm going to just let's see oh whoopsie these layers are actually on top of the other ones which is not what we want so grab your duplicated squares and make sure they're underneath uh, your smaller squares so once again you still can't see a difference at this very moment I'm just going to kind of make the colors look inverted uh, there we go so now we have this kind of checkerboard effect that's pretty cool so select your two new squares and what you're gonna do is just select your keyframes and move them forward on the timeline just a little bit select all your keyframes press F9 on your keyboard for a simple easy ease effect and there we go that is not that cool still but uh, well here I'll add like two more things on this screen and then I'll show you where the magic happens uh, so I'm going to do, let's see, I'll just create a random, uh, whatever you call this, a rectangle. There we go. Uh, I'll set my anchor point in the dead middle at the bottom. Um, I will center this on my composition just real quick. Uh, on my uh, timeline, press B on your keyboard. Set this to 0 and uh, 960 should put it right at the corner there we go I'm going to press R on my keyboard to bring up my rotation set this to 45 as we can see it uh, is perfectly diagonal I'm gonna drag my shape layer underneath all my other layers uh, select my shape layer and I'm just gonna change the fill color maybe to a kinda whitish gray blue wow I said every color ever uh, press S on your keyboard to bring up your scale properties 
And let's see, as this is happening, this little double Pac-Man effect, uh, just um, unclick your constraint proportions icon uh, and create a scale keyframe. And because this is going to be like our end size, I guess. Uh, and then right here, I'm just going to scale it down. So it almost is like in the negative. Well, actually, it is in the negative. I shouldn't say almost. So wow, we have this really cool, I'm, I'm using that term very loosely, effect going on. So, cool. There, that happens. Um, I'm just going to create a couple quick extra things uh, just to show you why this can be a cool effect. Uh, and, and really, like at the end of the day, this is really just for fun. Like I said, not my real video. Uh, just maybe something you guys can play around with and make your own kind of cool looking thing. Makes you look like you, you spent a lot of time on something you really didn't. So we love that. <laughs> um, let's see, I will just... Uh, create another square right in the middle, set my anchor point, center it perfectly. I'll make this color like uh, black or something. I don't know. Just press scale. Um, as this is changing, I'll have it pop up. So I'll just scale this down to zero. Set a keyframe. Uh, maybe come up to here and have it scale up. Uh, and let's see. F9 for easy ease, set a rotation keyframe, U on your keyboard to bring up both your uh, properties that you've keyframed. You can press J on your keyboard to go back a uh, keyframe, our most recent keyframe, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees so it kind of spins as it comes in. Super fancy. F9 just once again for our easy ease. If you really are going to use this effect, which I don't know if you would, you can go into the graph editor and make some more interesting um, movement but this is just a demonstration all right so we now have our super awesome effect all built and I'm just gonna go into my root animation and as we can see it is on the screen um, so what we just made is on the screen now can you kinda see what we'll be doing great I don't know if you can I couldn't hear your answer obviously so press command D on your keyboard to copy your one fourth layer uh, on the rotation, if you set your anchor point in the dead corner, you can just go and rotate this 180 degrees. I'll actually just type this. And so now the it happens like this. Okay, so that looks kind of cool, and obviously we spent no time on it. I'm going to select both my layers, Command D on my keyboard with those layers selected, right click, go up to transform, and uh, flip vertical. All right, now we have this sweet... A design and we spent no time on this at all so now all we have to do is select all of our or um, sorry do shift command uh, shift command option Y to create a new null object select all your one-fourth compositions which are all identical and just drag your um, uh, pick quick onto your null object just so we can scale it proportionally with no problems with our anchor point scale this down so it's uh you can see your whole animation and I will just play this real quick. So look, we spent no time on it, and we have this cool, well, I, I'm going to use that term once again very loosely, this cool design happening. Wow, that's fancy. So actually, you can go into your one-fourth layer and change any of the colors you want. Um, in your animation, just select the layer, go up into your fill. I'll show you in just a second. Um, also, set motion blur. So you can click and hold and just drag down on all of these, and then also click um, right up here, your enable motion blur button. Do that. And now we're going to have this uh, cool, like, blur effect as, as this stuff happens. Makes it look like you, or kind of feathered look. Makes it look like you spent even more time on this. So let's see. I'm going to do, um, and on my keyboard, just to set the end of my work area there, uh, go to the beginning. You can press home if you'd like. Press zero on your keyboard to preview. And uh, there we go. So that was really easy to make, right? Well, let's now make this even more cool. Can we do that? Oh, yes. Uh, so do select all your layers, all your one-fourth layers in your null object. Do Shift-Command-C to pre-compose this layer. We're going to call this 1. Why not? That's easy enough. So there we go. Our layer still has the blur and everything like that. I'm just going to duplicate this layer, Command-D. And on the it doesn't matter which one you grab. I'm going to do the one on the back. Just uh, press the rotation button. Uh, rotate this 45 degrees so it looks like we spent even more time on it and maybe scale this up just a touch. So I'm going to scale it up to uh, 110, it looks like. So now when I play my animation, look at that. 
I spent no time on this at all, and we're getting this really cool kind of kaleidoscope geometric pattern happening. So moderately cool. Once again, do Shift Option Command Y, create a new null object, uh, select both your comps, uh, pick quick them to the null object. This is just uh, to help you scale stuff because we kind of lost the the square since our uh, composition is rectangular. All right, just about there. Do Shift uh, Shift Command C one more time to pre-compose this. Call this uh, animation. Okay, cool. Now let's duplicate this layer uh, like five times. Do Command D, Command D, Command D, Command D. We ha now have the layer copied. Uh, so do, let's see, we'll set the first one to uh, the scale of 50. Set the second one, the scale to 60. Set the next one, the scale to, you guessed it, 70. The next one to 80. The next one to uh, 90. Cool. So wow, this looks pretty pretty crazy, doesn't it? Um, I don't know if it even, I might have scaled it up not enough, you know, but uh, just to give you a general idea. So now all I'm going to do is uh, press T on my keyboard to bring up my opacity. I'm going to set the first one to 90. Press T to bring on the next one to bring up 80. Uh, T on the next one to bring opacity. We'll set that to 70. Uh, T on the next one, we'll set that to 60. T on the next one, and we will set that to 50. So now we'll have a whole bunch of different color tones happening in our animation. Um, and let's see, I'm going to do this one more time. You don't have to. Shift, Alt, or Shift, Option, Command, Y, new null object. I'm going to parent all these objects. I'm actually going to scale it up now. I scaled it down too much. Um, and I'll just bring it up to like this size. And there we go. In no time at all, you created this kind of moderately cool animation. And it looks like you spent some time on this. It was super easy. As you saw, it's all controlled by this one composition, which is cool. And this little piece. So that's kind of unique, um, I guess. I haven't seen anybody put up a video like that. Um, probably because it's a totally useless effect, but if we're in our composition, I can change these colors. I'll just go crazy uh, real quick, select some random colors. Hopefully it'll look like a carnival. Uh, I don't know why I said hopefully, just who knows. We might get some weird, weird looking effect. So um, yeah, change those colors randomly. Go back to your root animation. All of our colors have changed dynamically. So there you go. Uh, in this quick video, you see how you can create this cool kaleidoscope effect. You can add rotation to your layers, you can add objects flying around, and you can wind up with something absolutely nuts. Um, I mean, like, look at this. This looks like intense. It looks like I spent some real time on it. So once again, this wasn't my real video. This was kind of a useless random technique. Uh, maybe you guys had fun with it. If you do like this video, if you hated it, dislike it, of course, and I will be back Sunday with a real video. Uh, low poly animation. So anyway, thanks a lot for watching and uh, yeah, get your learn on. See ya.